Hello and welcome everyone. This is Jen Espinosa Kaswami coming to you straight for my sweaty workouts. So I apologize for my appearance, but I try to keep it real out here. So, and again, we have the elephant in the room back there, my favorite new wall hanging. So I am here to expose why I am happy that I failed and why you should be too. So this is going to be a really short video, I think. <laughs> Sometimes they end up longer than that. But, um, People often think that failure is not an option and what if I fail and ever, the whole world is going to end if I fail, yada, yada, yada. Here's the deal, folks. I am actually happy that I failed and I'll share a reason why. I started 2017 with a lot of energy, not physical energy, it was mental energy. I was recovering from pneumonia. Physically, I was not at my healthiest self. But I was happy. I would, had just come from a vacation to New Orleans and, and was feeling good. My business is doing great. So I was feeling mentally happy. I'm like, okay, I'm going to jump into 2017 and I'm going to get fitter than ever, especially coming off of a sickness that prevented me from doing the kinds of exercises and workouts that I enjoy doing. Exercise is my number one stress relief, but I had not worked out very often in December and this was something that I wanted to do more of. So I set myself a, an, a goal or a commitment, whatever you want to call it, to work out 20 days per month every month for 2017. And now that we're at the last day of January, I am checking in here and, and keeping myself accountable here in my Facebook group, Be Weightless, because I want to let you know that I failed. Hmm. And it's okay. And here's why I'm happy that I failed. I was supposed to work out 20 times in January. The past few days, I got sick again. And I was not feeling good. In fact, on Friday, I pretty much slept the whole day. So that canceled out one of my days. And then Sunday, I didn't work out either. And th that would have been my two days. I reached 18 times of working out this month instead of the 20 that I had focused on. I'm two days short of my goal. Two days. Here's why that's okay. It is only when we fail that we can go back and reevaluate and understand what our particular challenges are and that we can reprioritize what is no longer serving us or helping us get to our goal. Hi, thanks for joining. Make sure you say hi in the comments so I can see who's here. I'm talking about why I'm happy I failed and why you should be too. Uh, I was talking about my commitment to work out 20 days per month in January and how I fell two days short of that. I'm only at 18 times as of today. This was my 18th workout for the month. And that's a good thing because I'm realizing, given the time commitments and the priorities that I've set for myself in January, that perhaps working out 20 days per month was unrealistic or I need to remove other things in my life that are not serving me what happened in January. So if I look back over my January and what was going on, I had my kids home with me for the first part of January because it was winter break. So that first week of January, um, it's more challenging for me to work out because my kids are there. They require my attention. I want to spend quality time with them. And yes, while we can exercise together, they tend to do things like yoga and, and other things that I'm not a big fan of personally. I like to hit it and quit it. I like to work really hard and lift some heavy weights. And I want to discourage my children from lifting the heavy weights that I'm doing because I don't want them to get injured. So, um, you know, working out with my kids at home is a challenge. And there was another week in January where they were home two days from school. So already I have um, seven days where my kids were home with me. And that doesn't mean that I could should forget exercising entirely when my children are home. That's not the message I'm trying to share here. But for me, that's a particular challenge. When I work out, I like to work out by myself. I like to work out intensely and I like to lift weights. And those three things don't necessarily mix with children because uh, with children, you know, having a sustained amount of time to get away from your kids and then leaving you alone and not asking for assistance with something is pretty challenging. At least it is for me in my household. Maybe it's not for you. So already, you know, the, the cards were a little stacked against me. However, there's some other challenges that were going on. I am rolling out a lot of really fun and interesting things in my business. For example, this month I rolled out a new service called a VIP day. And 
I'm running a promotion on a VIP day, but it expires today. So if you want to learn more details about that, please comment on this video. Even if you're watching the replay and let me know, I will connect with you and we'll talk about what that looks like and, and whether it can help serve your health goals. So I rolled out some new services in my business. Hi, thanks for joining. If you're joining me live, please make sure to say hi and comment on this video. Um, we're talking about some of the new services I rolled in my business that made me fail at my exercise goals. I rolled out VIP days, which is entirely, it's a private day where I focus on you and your health challenges and how to strategize and plan those milestones to get you to your health goal. And this has been super exciting for me. I had my first VIP day yesterday. It was amazing. I loved it. Again, it was a new product, it was a new service, and it's something that I love doing. And I have clients who are taking me up on this offer and who need this service in their lives. So I'm very excited that that was rolled out. I also had rolled out a brand new challenge, which is called Five Days to Body Bliss. This is a free challenge, and I've been managing that on the back end. It is an, an evergreen challenge, which means that you can opt into it at any time you wish. And um, you, you can participate as you wish. You can work as you go. The, the workbook involved with it is very do-it-yourself kind of approach. But I still had to do things from a business standpoint on the back end for that. And then I also have been increasing the amount of speaking engagements I'm doing, which I love to speak. I love to present to groups. This is one of my primary passions in life and business. So this has been a good thing. A lot of really cool things happening in my business, which are taking time away from my my exercise commitments. I'm also finding my flow in terms of being a somewhat new work at home mom. I'm figuring out my daytime schedule. You know, once I drop the kids at school, here are the three things I need to focus on that day. And this has been somewhat of a challenge for me. I'm learning how to manage my time. I'm learning how to manage my day. I'm learning how to ignore the messy kitchen and how to ignore the crumbs on the kitchen floor, how to ignore all the dog hair and all the distractions that happen at home, right? When your home is dirty and it's just too much clutter for your head, it's very difficult to concentrate on business when you're doing that. That. So I'm managing and I'm prioritizing and I'm learning as I go. So that's why my failure at achieving my exercise goal is a good thing. Because now that the month is over, I can take a look at my entire month and say, okay, here are some challenges. My kids were home with me more often, which makes it harder for me to do the kinds of workout I enjoy. Uh, my business was picking up and some other exciting things are happening in my business that made it a challenge as well. And then lastly, that third challenge is, well, I'm still finding my way as a work-at-home mom. And these are good things. I'm identifying where my challenges are. That's the only way you make progress. Now, here's one thing that I'd love to celebrate from my failure. Okay, so I only worked out 18 days this month. That's amazing. Considering last month in December, I maybe did two times a week, and that was very, very limited. Like I was doing maybe 10 minutes. I wasn't lifting as heavy because whenever I started to cough, my pneumonia kicked in, and it was really difficult for me to catch my breath. So this is a huge, huge progress for me. The past month in December, I was not exercising. Hi, thanks for joining. Make sure to say hi in the comments so I know who's here. I'm telling why failure was good for me because even though I only exercised 18 times in January, this was probably 110% better than what I was doing in December. In December, I really stepped back. I really wasn't where I needed to be. And realistically, if I look over the past three months, and this is something I encourage my clients to do. It's not necessarily what you did yesterday or the week before or even the month before. But look at three months of time in terms of your habits and your patterns and evaluate where your average was. So for me, in the past three months, my average amount of time I spent exercising, <clears throat> again, this was when I just became a work-at-home mom, <coughs> excuse me, was probably about three times a week. So three times a week would end up being, what, 12 times, maybe 15 times in a month. So even though I'm only at 18 times of working out this month, I have increased from 15 times per month to 18 times per month. Hello, yay me, I am progressing. And that's what improving yourself is all about. It's about progress and not perfection. 
I know I'm not perfect and I can accept and acknowledge and honor that in myself. But I'm super happy because I am so much in a better place today on the January 31st than I was on December 31st. And this is something to be celebrated. So my particular challenge to you is what can you celebrate even if you failed? Because failure is fine. Failure is how you learn. Failure is where you identify your opportunities for next time. Where have you failed and where does that show you how awesome you are and how much you've progressed? I also want to throw a little, a quick little challenge out there, not just to comment on this video about where your failure was and how it helped you and why you're happy about that failure. But here's another challenge because I like to challenge people. Here's the deal. I want you to take out a piece of paper. You can put it in your planner if you want to put it in your planner. Take out a piece of paper. Take out one of these beauties, one of these pens and write down two columns. Column number one, more. Write down more. Column number two, less. Now take as much time as you need and you write down everything in column number one, the more column that you want more of in your life. It's that simple. What do you want more of in your life? For me, I want more fitness. I want more health. I want to be able to catch my breath without coughing. That's a work in progress. <laughs> I want to be able to do a pull up this year. That would be huge for me. That would be amazing. I want to be a red hot mama. I want more of that. That feeling, that physicality, that ability, that skill. I want more of that. For column number two, what do you want less of? For me, I want less distractions. I want less excuses. So I was sick. I still could have moved. You know, that's an excuse. I understand that for what it is. And I can acknowledge that. I want less struggle with managing my day. I want less, uh, less, I guess I would say, um, wanting to say no to me because I said yes to something else. And again, this is a work in progress. I'm managing my time and I'm learning how to prioritize. I want less of the things that do not serve my goals. And yes, I will continue with my goal of 20 days per month of exercising in February, in March, in April, and every month after this point. I might have to give myself a break during summer break because my kids are with me during summer break. God help us all. But... <laughs> But I still have that as my goal. If you don't set your goal high enough, you're never going to achieve it. Don't set it for something you feel comfortable with. Set it for something you that stretches you, that you feel slightly uncomfortable with. That's where growth happens. By the way, if you are brave and you are here with me on this journey to improve yourself in 2017, no matter what that looks like, share with me one thing from your more column. What do you want more of? Share in the comments, whether you're live or joining me for the replay. What do you want more of? Share one thing. For me, I told you quite a few things. You can choose whatever you want for your personal situation or business situation. And then... If you're even more brave, and I love you for your bravery, and it's amazing, and you're courageous, share what you want less of. That's in column two. You know, that piece of paper you wrote this down? Share. Because if you don't share, nobody's going to know. It's never going to see the light of day, and you're never going to be held accountable. I'm here to, to help you be accountable in a gentle and beautiful and loving way. What do you want less of? Please share your thoughts. I have shared with you that I failed, that I'm happy that I failed, what I want less of and what I want more of and how I'm going to keep hitting my goals in February and going forward. If you want to learn more about how you can be proactive with planning your own strategy for health, Comment on here, say VIP, and I'll connect with you and we'll talk about VIP. It's not a commitment. It's just a conversation. Everything I talk about is a conversation. I'm opening up those lines of communication because that's what I do and that's what I love to do. I love to connect with folks like you. Uh, otherwise, I have other resources that would be able to help you out, but let's connect about VIP days first and I can direct you to other resources that might be a better fit for you. Thank you for joining me today with 
why you should be happy about your failure and share with me your less column and your more column, at least one from each, and I will be there with, with you, cheering you all of the way. Connect with me for a VIP day or what that might mean for you, and I'd love to hear more from you. Talk to you soon. This is Jenna Spinoza-Kaswami at Be Weightless. Thanks for joining me.